الحميد والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله we've had a few days now of intense gatherings remembering the whole of various ulama of the past including of course the father of our teacher Habib Hassan Habib Muhammad bin Salim and Abbas and of course Habib Nuh and today of course Al-Am al-Siddiq and what we should learn from this is that this isn't just an annual event for us to get together to read the Mawlid and to eat Briyani because there must be much more to it than this and Alhamdulillah there's blessing in, in reading Mawlid and eating Briyani especially when we do it together but what is the, what is the real essence of this and what, what are we supposed to take forward from this? First of all, these three and the others that we've mentioned over these few days are all awliya. And we've heard this discussion over and over again in the talks about the meaning of the awliya. But what do we learn from the awliya? And what can we implement in our lives? with regards to these awliya. Because if it's just a, ma a matter of recognizing the awliya and respecting the awliya, then this is good. But it will happen once a year and it will not impact on our daily lives. But what you should look at, in particular these three, and uh, of course, uh, Sheikh Omar Khatib as well, whose who's whole was marked this morning, there's something special about their wilayah. And there's something special that we can learn and implement tomorrow, today and tomorrow, and live out the rest of our lives. What was important in particular about Lama Abdul Ali Sadiqi is that his ethic, his the consequences of his actions, that he founded organizations which are today influential in how our society works, in this particular in Singapore. The fact that he uh, established the, community, the, the union of religious dialogue sets the, the, the dialogue of peace, which makes this society different to many other societies. We know from uh, the likes of uh, Habib, uh, Habib Nuh that he was a man of the people. If you look at his biography, you see some of the most interesting things is that he enjoyed uh, Chinese opera which is appropriate on this, uh, uh, over this weekend to be thinking about what that means. He was part of society. He was part of the community. And the reason why these great awliya are so important is because of their role in society. But how did they get the role in society? That's the question, is why were these awliya so special? And how can we become special. Maybe we won't reach the rank of Oliya, but every single one of us, every single one of us can implement. about his flock. Go back to what I was talking about, these three great 
these four or five great awliya, these great ulama, who impacted on society. They understood this in two ways. And this is what we need to think about for ourselves. They impacted in two ways. One is first of all, as Imam al-Haddad says when he talks about this hadith, he says there's two types of ri'ayah, two types of responsibility. There's two types of, 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 of being a shepherd. One is ri'ayat al khasa is your specific responsibility. Your specific responsibility of which you will be asked about. But look and right, every single one of you is a shepherd. And every one of you will be asked. Asked. So Yom al Qiyamah, you will be asked about specific things. What are these specific things? Go to the first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the sam'a wal basr wal fa'ad, kullu ulayka kanu anhu mas'anha mas'ula. Your hearing, your sight and your minds, or your hearts, right, has both meanings. Every single one of these things, you will be asked about. So your, your, your responsibility is first of all, the gifts that Allah has given you specifically, which is, includes your sight, your hearing, your mind, your strength, your abilities, your individual abilities. If you think about that, every single one of these are going to be asked about. What did you look at? What did you use your eyes for? What did you hear? What did you use your hearing for? Once you understand this, and you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about everything that you've done with your eyes, with your hear hearing, with your mind, with your tongue, with what you say, you will be asked about it. Once you understand this, you understand al masuliya responsibility, your own individual responsibility. And these awliya that we've just mentioned, they understood this first. They understood this first, that they knew they were going to be asked about what they did with their bodies, with their individual responsibilities. And as a result of this, because they could answer what they did, they, they could answer about these, these things, then they were able to take on their riayat al the more general responsibilities that fall upon them. The specifics, our hearing, our sight, our minds, and of course our tongues and our other limbs. But also, once you've established that, then what are you going to be asked about? The man will be asked about Ahli, about his family, this is the next part of the hadith. Every person will be asked about those people placed under his responsibility. If you look after yourself, your heart, your eyes, then you will be a good father, a good husband. If you don't, you will not be a good father or a good husband. And don't talk about Elijah because you will never be an old, one of the only because the first thing you need to do is understand what you've been given. And if you understand that, and you take care of what you're looking at, of what you're hearing, if you take care of these things, then you will know how to take care of others. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Us prophets, all of us were shepherds. All of us were given the responsibility to look after animals. <clears throat> Why? Because through looking after those that are close to you, you can look after those who are further. So if you can look after your eyes, and you can keep them lowered at the time when there's fitting, when there's difficulties, you can control your tongue when there's debates going on about rubbish that you don't need to get involved in. And you can stay away from arguments. You can stay away from the haram. Then you can start to be a good father, a good husband, a good teacher. And once you can become a good father, then you can be good at anything. Then you can look after other people. And look at how these people that I've just mentioned, they became scholars, but they impacted on society. They changed society because they took responsibility for that society. And you have to go out, look after yourself, you look after your family, but then you take on your social responsibility in how you do the dawah. 
how you talk to people, how you behave with people, how you smile at people. Because the smile changes people's hearts. And this is something that many people have forgotten. When they make their dawah, they forget the most important thing is to smile and to <coughs> We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the only year. But at least to give us control and understanding of our masculinity, our responsibility over our own bodies, over our families, to protect our bodies, to protect our eyes, to protect our hearing, to protect our hearts, and to protect our families and our communities, especially those that were touched by these great ulama we mentioned, to protect this blessed, this blessed country of Singapore and the, our, our teachers and everywhere that their influence has gone. We ask Allah to protect the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah 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 Muhammad sallallahu alayh